gamers all around the flat earth today is the day where i teach you how to play terran versus zerg in 2021 i did this video back in 2019 for 2020 so i figured i might as well uh update you on the 2021 version um so starcraft has not gotten many patches not much has changed i will be doing um well, not much, but at the same time I did. Uh, I will be also doing the Terran versus Protoss and Terran versus Terran guides and maybe some Protoss guides as well. But today we're going to start with Terran versus Zerg, how to play in 2021. In the description of this video, I'm going to be linking a series that was played in uh, South Korea by professional players. And the Terran player was doing this build so you can see the games in action as well as I'll explain everything that needs to be explained um, from why you do things, when, how, and so on and so forth. So, uh, the build is, uh, like I said, for TVZ. Um, if you're wondering if this is a bio or a mech build, it's both. I did this kind of replay just to show you guys the build order to explain it. And I did the variation for bio and then variation for mech as well. So it's like both mech and bio in one video. Um... So yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll explain to you guys how you do the build and then you can check in the description of the video the, the actual pro gaming series where the Terran does this build so you can see how it works exactly and so forth. You know. All right, so the build is, you start with the barracks, um, then gas. So you go normal supply depot, then barracks, then gas. Um, one thing that people still ask me to this day, do I scout in TVZ? If you feel like you're losing to a lot of all-ins, a lot of cheeses, uh, like 12 pulls or something, you can scout at 17 supply. So when your 17th SCV comes out, you can scout. If you're not, then you don't need to. Because uh, it does cost uh, quite a few minerals to scout. And that's why you see in pro games, people skip scouting in TVZ. So when your barracks finishes, you're going to start a Reaper. Send the SCV to make the command center. You know, the usual. This is nothing, you know, weird or new. The build that I'll be showing you today is a variation of the build I showed you last year, which is more aggressive one. This one is more, uh, well, it's not more economic. It is, but it's upgraded. also aggressive, but it just has better economy, in my opinion. It's kind of like an updated version, if you will. Once you start the CC, you start the second supply depot, you start one marine, and again, if you feel safe, uh, you can send the Reaper straight across the map. If you wanna be extra safe, you can keep the Reaper back until uh, your CC is close to finishing in case there's a uh, Ling run buys or something like that. Ready. Otherwise, you can just send the Reaper to the natural and then third to make sure that uh, it does Zerg actually built a third. That's the first thing you wanna be scouting for. If the Zerg doesn't have a third in about 40, 45 seconds, then you should be checking your, uh, his main and natural to see how much gas he's mining, if there's a baneling nest, if there's a roach warren, if there's a layer. Yeah, just scout for all ends, right? With the first marine, what you want to do is just deny any ling uh, trying to scout your base and also just denying overlords. Now, this is where this build differentiates from the one uh, last year, all right? So, first things first. Uh, when the Marine finishes, you start a reactor, and with the SCV that was building, let me show you, with the SCV that was building this depot, you're going to start a factory. So it lines up very nicely. Factory starts, then you have 50 gas, boom, reactor, and instead of gas getting another gas, which is what you usually do with this kind of opening, you're going to skip the second gas completely. And you're going to go for a third CC super, super fast. Now, a lot of people... Oh, there it is. A lot of people think that this build is not safe because the third CC is so quick and you might die to all ins. But if you see how the build develops, it's pretty much exactly the same. The only thing you're delaying is your Cloak Banshee uh, upgrade by 100 gas. So look at this. CC finishes, you're getting your stuff there. You're swapping your factor in your barracks. And the moment your factor finishes, you're gonna start your starport. Well, actually, you're gonna start the two Hellions first. And then you're gonna start a starport. I'm still on one gas, as you can see. And also, I'm gonna link this replay in the description so you can check it out. 
Um, you start with two Hellions, and from here on out, you're gonna have a constant Hellion production. You get the start port up, and then you're gonna get the second gas, and you're gonna get a tech lab as well. So, at this point on, the build pretty much resumes like your regular 111, except you also have a third. Your start port was delayed by six, seven seconds, and that's it. So, your economy will be absolutely insane. Um, another good thing about this build is you don't need to make a depot right now because you can see I'm 40 out of 46 and the CC will finish before I get supply capped so you can skip this specific uh, depot timing. Now the first variation I'm going to show you to you guys is the buy variation and uh, this build is like I said super economic with the 3 base but also you still have a lot of aggression and, and potential to actually kill the Zerg. So one starport and uh, uh, ends up finishing. You swap it to the tech lab, and you're gonna start a banshee. Boom! And whenever you have hundred gas, you're gonna pop that as well into a cloak. You don't need the extra gases yet because you're going bio. Keep producing hellions, and with the next hundred gas, after you start a banshee and a cloak, you're gonna make an armory. So the reason why I really, really like this build is because not only you're super economic but you also have the chance to kill the zerg or just do a lot of harassment so even if your harassment fails right even if you attack and all your hellbeds die you still have three cc which most zergs will be used to the two base variation of this and they will think like oh i'm super far ahead but even if you force the zerg to make units and even like you go back or you trade this is way better for you because you're pumping from three cc the whole time and the Zerg had to cut drones in order to make units. So with bio version, I go for a total of eight Hellions and then I build two extra, just have for defense if there's a Zerg uh, certainly run by, and I go for two Banshees total. Once I have the eight Hellions, the Banshee is about to finish, you start running across the map. And I would suggest to try two attack paths. Try attacking the third, and you can go to try and kill the third, or what I prefer doing is going straight into the natural. So assuming the Zerg has a third base here, what I love doing is attacking from this side into the natural with Hellbats. Why? Well, number one, there's no spore here usually. So your Banshee have free reign at this point. Number two, if the Zerg is making Zerglings, you will basically intercept all three rally points. So the Zerglings coming from here, here, and here are going to be gathering at this place and they won't be able to kind of like stack up before they move into your hellbats they're just gonna randomly run into them so i prefer just running into the the natural and just go as fast as you can into the middle line while constantly move command a move move command a move uh keep the main shot of the spore range you don't want to lose them you're gonna go for two total so you don't want to just waste banshees for you know suiciding into drones or something like that just get a lot of free damage with the banshee and just try to keep them alive now, back at home, the armory is finishing, of course. You're still walling off with supply depots. Uh, the reason, by the way, I didn't put the command center uh, in the wall is because if you do that, you kind of tell the Zerg straight away, oh, I'm going triple CC, right? So if you get like Overlord super early in your base, you have a Marine for it. So the Zerg will not know that this is 3rd CC. They will just assume that this is a normal 111. And this is, I feel like, the bait. Because Zergs think like, oh, I just defend this and then I mass drone. And that's fine, but you're very equal in economy at that point. So, as you're doing the attack, uh, you start transitioning. So this is how you transition out of this build. It's very actually close to, again, how you transition normally in TVZ. If this was a you know the standard build what you would be doing now is throw down the third and then throw down the two extra barracks but because we're doing this one i'm getting two extra barracks i'm gonna get stim look at that boom 100 gas stim starts hopefully soon unless i'm uh, <coughs> forgetting about it there it is you have two extra hellions to defend you could even turn them into hellbats if you want to floating the third um, you're gonna get two engineering bays next. Double gas is going up already. Look at it, look at that saturation. You have so many SCDs already. 
Second Banshee is out, make another reactor with the starport. And the first reactor you're also going to make, or I guess not first, your second reactor will be made with the uh, factory. Two more barracks, and at this point it's pretty much a normal TVZ transition, right? You go into five barracks, one uh, factory, one starport, double upgrades, you have your armory already, and you try to secure the third base. Now, depending how your push went, you have to adjust to it. So for example, if my push went terrible, right, and I lost every single unit, and the only thing that I have remaining is these two Hellbats, maybe you want to wait a little bit on getting the third, right? You want to wait for at least one round of Marines just to have something to defend with, because you don't want to lose these SCVs. But if you did some damage and you still have two Banshees alive, maybe you saved, you know, two more Hellions with these two, we can just grab the third and not worry about it. The moment you do that, start walling off. Always do that in TDZ. Start walling off slowly. I'm macroing back in my base. Uh, I put the factory back on the tech lab. 1-1 one, one started. So it's all, all good. As you see the way that gas works out with this build, I'm going to have uh, another siege tank queued up here. And then... Um, or should have... And then I'm going to make double medevac, double reactor, getting the third gases. And very, very soon, even though I just established the third, very, very soon I'll be able to throw, throw down a fourth base. Now, the reason why I'm killing these Hellbats, by the way, is because this was an AI game and I'm just killing them because assuming they're dead, right? Because So I can free up supply. Obviously, you don't want to kill them if you're playing in a normal game. If they're alive, keep them, okay? So... From here on out, uh, 66 SCVs, 67 SCVs is 650, almost 70 is very good, fully saturated, three bases, I'm gonna pop down fourth, and uh, overall just very very good. Now, there's two options what you want to do from here. Uh, the number one option is, oh, hold on, let me put this, I'm busy. The number one option is to attack with your whole army which you should only do if the push went really well. Like you killed a bunch of stuff, right? If you didn't or did, m you know, mediocre uh, damage, right? You, you killed something, but you lost the Hellbats. What I would suggest is sieging up your tanks, finish off the wall, and just do the double medevac drop. Research try to get some creep killed, maybe try to deny the fourth base, just harass the Zerg a little bit. Again, I can't tell you exactly where to go and what to do because it depends on the game. That's why I'm trying to teach you what to do in certain situations. Behind this, you do want to get three tanks. No matter what, you want to get three tanks at least for defense, right? So after that, there's two options. You either will go for Widow Mines or Siege Tank uh, Heavy Bio Playstyle. Now, this is up to you. I get uh, this question very often. Why don't you go this? Why is this better? Why do people go Widow Mines? Why do they go Siege Tanks? Some maps are better for Widow Mines, some are better for Siege Tanks, but they both work and they're both good. It depends what you prefer. Like, if you're used to Widow Mines, go Widow Mines. If you're used to Siege Tanks, go Siege Tanks. Now, if you're playing against Road Travager Hydra Comp, you want Siege Tanks, for sure. But if you're playing against uh, Ling Roach Bane or uh, Ling Bane Hydra, you can do one or the other, depends what you like again. So soon I'm gonna be throwing down a second factory, which again, no matter which play style you like, throw down a second factory soon. And if you plan to go Widow Mines, upgrade the Drilling Claws. If you play to maintain Siege Tanks, then keep making Siege Tanks. The upgrade on the Armory depends on what you want to do. So if you're going for Siege Tanks, get the Attack Upgrade. If you're going for Widow Mines, get the armor plating. Obviously keep your upgrades going on your engineering base, getting the fourth, and at 7.30 you can see I have a fourth coming, double drop across the map. You did a good amount of harassment. You should have banshees that you could just put like this around the map to patrol, maybe catch links and stuff. And from here on out, it's a pretty standard game. Um, you know, you're gonna do your first push with 1-1, one, one, your first big push. So basically with the next two medevacs, what you want to do is grab, uh, you should have three tanks, three, four tanks, grab three, four tanks, um, get this drop back and just attack into the Zerg's fourth. The very important thing, 
Doesn't matter if you play mech or bio, never attack in between bases unless it's the Hellbat push early on, where you want to attack into the natural. At this point on, you always want to attack the last base and try to deny as much creep as possible. It is extremely, extremely important to deny creep. So if the Zerg has a fourth base here, you're going to push from this side. If the Zerg has the fourth base here, you're going to push from this side. Always attack the fourth because the fourth base, or if the fifth one is the last base, has the least amount of creep and you do not want to fight on creep. Other than that, uh, going into the late game, if it gets to uh, you know that point, you have two factories, so you can go double Thor against Brewlords, or you can go Thors against Ultras, you can go Ghost, you can go Widow Mines, again, whatever you're used to. You can transition to more Liberators in the late game if there's Ultras, um, Ghosts, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you the mech variation in case you're a mech player or you just, uh, you know, maybe want to learn uh, how to play mech. All right, here we go. I'm going to speed through because the first part is pretty much exactly the same. It just varies when you're taking your gases and obviously you're not adding barracks, you're adding factories. So that's another variation of it. Here it is. So this is the mech variation. So this is basically this point. It's exactly the same. Nothing's changed. Exactly. It's actually the same replay until this point. So, this is how the mech one goes. Um, we're making Hellions, that doesn't change, everything is normal. Sacking Gas, same timing, Banshee, same timing, Armory, same timing. Okay, gonna get Starport there, boom. Now, the one thing that changes is you don't want to be mining minerals or as long as I did without grabbing the gases. I'm gonna be grabbing the gases much, much sooner. So armory should be going up as soon as I have 100 gas. Third is coming up. Boom, there's the armory. And obviously you're not going to go for only eight Hellions plus two to defend. You're gonna keep making Hellions because you're going mech, right? So you don't wanna stop making them, which that's one thing that bio compared to mech uh, is, is different. Like with bio, with this build, you do the push and you're kind of done, right? Because you don't have a follow-up, you're transitioning to Raxes. But with mech, even when you do the first push, you can keep reinforcing with Hellbats and uh, you have potential to do a lot more damage with it. So right now you can see I'm getting gases much earlier than the last time. The last time I got gases, I had 20 plus SCVs. Now I'm getting them earlier. Because I do want to, you know, get more factories and get the siege tanks and all that. Third base is landed. Again, I'm not going to go through the attack. Same thing, what I talked about. Except this time I go to the third. Um, whether you go for the natural or the third does not matter if you're by or mech. Just so you guys know. Walling off the natural. Getting those juicy gases. Obviously I'm not making, uh, you know, stim. I'm going to pretend to do the push now over here. And back in my base, which is what I want to show you, is the transition. So benches are being made. This is the second banshee. Yep. Add -on is up and running. So when I play mech, I usually like to make at least three banshees. Uh, because it, they will keep you safe from any kind of roach pushes. And three banshees is enough to just blast roaches down. Because you have only hellions at this point. Um, if you're really into banshees, and again, this is a playstyle thing. You can actually keep making benches the whole time. You can go up to 10 benches if you want. Because they have a lot of potential in harassing. And if the opponent moves out on the map and they don't have Overseer or you kill it, you can just kill everything else. But I would suggest if you're not super uh, used to playing with benches, go three and then transition out of the, the Starport tech into something else. So, back in the base. 16 on minerals, 16 over here. Well, 15 plus two making stuff. Sending uh, SCVs to the third, walling it off once again, and adding two factories. I'm making a reactor with the barracks, this time. And I made a tech lab here with the barracks as well. So once this Banshee finishes, I can swap the starport out and put two factories on the two tech labs. I'm, uh, I'm making another armory. The first one was, you know, for Hellbats. Uh, and then the second one, when it finishes, I'm going to start my 1-1 one, one upgrades. Now, this is the thing. There is two ways to play mech, okay? 
so this depends a lot on what league you are, what your APM is, how good you are with each style. Style number one is the classic mech. Siege Tanks, Thor, Hellbat, Liberator, Viking. You know, the, the, the good old kind of camping until 200 and then you go across the map and you kill your opponent. That is perfectly viable, it's fine. Uh, you don't need to be like, oh my god, that doesn't work. It works. Uh, if you're a bit more passive or slower player, I would say go for that. It's good. The second playstyle, which is the one I prefer, uh, is the new... I mean, it's not really new, it's been out for like 3-4 years now, is the uh, Battle Mech. So, Battle Mech, for those who don't know, is Cyclone Hellbat Liberator or Cyclone Hellion um, Banshee. In which case, you can keep producing Banshees and you can go into double uh, factory with Tech Lab, one reactor and go Cyclone Hellbat. That one is much, much more active. It's, you need to be out on the map, you need to be harassing, you can constantly pressure the Zerg. While the Siege Tank one into Thor's is much more passive. You cannot really move out on the map until you're close to maxing up. So, which one do you pick? Try both and see what works for you. Um, if you're going the standard old mech, you go for three Tech Lab factories and two Reactor factories off of three base. If you're going for the new uh, new battle mech playstyle, you're going to go five factories total, four with tech lab and one with reactor, because you want to make sure you're making cyclones at all times, and obviously get cyclone upgrades uh, and get the blue flame as well. So I'm getting the gases on the third off also very quickly. Doesn't matter which mech you choose to go for, you want the gases as fast as possible. Uh, the moment my factories are finishing, I'm throwing another two factories up because again, your economy is just popping off at this point. I'm getting one one, I'm landing the factories, started two more factories, so everything's going uh, pretty pretty good. In this replay, I just, uh, you know, opted to show you guys with the siege tank one. Uh, if I was doing cyclones, I would start up two cyclones, get the uh, Mac Field Accelerator and Blue Flame, and just, you know macro it up one one's going more factories and again same thing at this point just like in the bio build is depending how your first build went or first push went you can do another push with your banshees that hopefully didn't die they're all repaired up and you can do another hell bad banshee push or if it went super poorly what you can do is play defensive with siege thing Hellbat, and you can go with three banshees across the map and try to pick off the fourth try to pick off the drones and whatever you do try to keep the banshees alive as long as possible because the zerg is also much more scared when there's banshees out on the map you know trying to snipe stuff than if they know that the banshees are dead and there's no potential for them so i find that someone is clipter says i find the battle max style uh, weak if they go into heavy roach and three base well then you're doing it wrong because you would have assuming you don't lose banshees you would have three Banshees, and again, when I go Battle Mech, for example, I don't like the Liberator uh, Cyclone Hellbat, I like the Banshee Cyclone, Liber uh, Banshee Cyclone Hellbat, and uh, the reason for that is because of what you just said. If the, if the Zerg commits to like super heavy Roach Count, sorry my dogs are drinking water behind, if they go into super heavy Roach style, once you reach enough cyclones you will absolutely blast through uh, any roaches but until then if you have imagine if you had four or five banshees shooting the whole time at the roaches they would absolutely melt and another thing is if the zerg does commit to mass roaches and you have three four or five banshees blasting at them that is very all in uh it's not all in in the terms of maybe economy but they're throwing away all the units because if they attack you and you have four banshees here unless they kill you the benches are going to clean everything up and uh, Zerg is committing way, way too much. And also if you're going into standard mech, I mean, you, if you have like two to four siege things with benches and hellbats, you should be fine. Uh, I'm getting the fourth, getting some missile turrets in case there's benches. One thing to note when you're playing mech is try to identify what the Zerg is going for. Uh, the reason I say this is because of mutas. If the Zerg goes mutas, you need to... Um, Obviously, if you're going Cyclones, 
you know, just keep making cyclones and add some turrets. But if you're going this style with siege things, you need to add doors or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You got to be able to, to scout and properly uh, react. Don't know what's happening with my dogs there, meeping. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah. Um, again, with Battle Mech, you want to be super active out on the map and then just kind of try to deny their bases. With this kind of style, you want to be pushing most likely with 2 2 upgrades. We should be close uh, close to maxing out and try to kill these Zerg then. Going into the late game, I mean, there's a couple of options. You can go into Ghosts, you can go into Range Liberators, you can go into BCs. Again, it depends a lot what you're playing against and what you're used to uh, using in general. I would probably say avoid making Widow Mines with Mech. You can, to, uh, you can make Widow Mines and like put them in random places like one here, one there, one there, one there. But you don't want to necessarily use them with your... Um, your army. It doesn't supplement the mech army uh, that well. So, how about Widow Mines from Mutas? You can if you're caught off guard, but honestly, Cyclones actually deal really well with Mutas. Even if you're reaching, if they're reaching mass Muta count, you can add one or two Thors with Battle Mech, but in general, Cyclones are very, very good against Mutas because they keep up with them in speed. So, the moment they lock on, the Mutas are kind of effed. Um, but yeah, from here on out, again, it's a standard game. Keep expanding. Your economy will be booming. Uh, that's something when you try this build, you got to get used to and you got to practice it. Your economy is really, really good. And uh, you need to be able to, you know, keep up and spend your money. But obviously, just like anything in StarCraft, the more you play it, the more you'll get uh, used to. That is it. I'll be making the TVT guide as well, the TVP guide and maybe Protoss guides. If you have any suggestions uh, for any guides, whether it's a Terran guide, Protoss guide, or any kind of guide, uh, let me know in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. Have a great night, great day, great morning, wherever you are. I will be linking again the games, the pro games, in the description of the video, and I will be also linking these two replays so you guys can copy them in-game so you don't have to re-watch this video all the time. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.